project is extremely dangerous. <laughs> Hi, it's Skip from Skip's Messy Workbench, and I want to do an update on my progress on the Lost in Space B9 robot, the Mobius version of it. I have been experimenting with some of my ideas for the electronics to animate this robot. I haven't even looked at the parts within the kit yet. This is just me working through some of the electronics that I would like to use uh, just so I know that my concepts, my ideas are feasible and that they will at least electrically work. Mechanically working is another problem um, just because of part size. But anyway, I, I thought I would do this video and, and show you three of the ideas that I have and and the breadboards electronically that I built so follow me on down to the shop and I'll show you what I'm up to okay <laughs> see you there Hi, and welcome to my bench. This is Skip from Skip's Messy Workbench. And what you are seeing on the screen is uh, one of several experiments I'm doing for some of the electronics that I want to put into or possibly incorporate into the Lost in Space B9 robot. So you're looking at a continuous rotation servo that's what's being held in the vise and spinning as I'm talking here. Servos normally only run from 0 degrees to 180 degrees in a, play, in a way that the position can be controlled. With a continuous rotation servo, you can't control the position but we can control the direction and the speed. So it's based on sending the motor a signal, a voltage or a count, let's say, and it is a count because it's a PWM type signal. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. And you send it a count of zero to 180. When you get a count of 90, that means that the motor is totally stopped. So as you can see here, the motor stopped. The count is actually 90 right now. And if you'll see, the each one of these divisions on this scope is 0.5 milliseconds. So that was stopped right there, which is one and a half milliseconds. And that is the width of the pulse when the motor is stopped. As it increases count up to 180, this pulse goes to approximately two and a half milliseconds, which it did. Right now it's starting to decrease in speed again. Uh, so two and a half milliseconds is full speed in a counterclockwise direction. It's going to get to the 
one and a half milliseconds it'll stop and now it's going to reverse direction and start going clockwise and you can see the pulse getting narrower as the motor speed increases as this pulse width gets narrower and when this gets to approximately a half a millisecond it will have reached maximum speed and the motor will then in this case start to reverse direction now it's doing this action because that's how I have the code written to do this so I'm thinking about at this period moment in time using a a uh, continuous rotation servo for the rotation of his chest and also possibly the rotation of the the brain that that little crown thing that's in his brain um, because I can control the speed at which this thing goes so I haven't narrowed in on that yet I haven't like settled on that but I'm experimenting with this because this is actually the first time I've using a continuous rotation servo and I find that it's worked really well and it's something that I'll be able to control directly from a um, the transmitter receiver of an RC controller I won't need an additional control right now I'm running this from a Arduino micro that's what's controlling it right now and the code that I'm using for this I'll have an explanation for that on my website if you go to skipsmessyworkbench.com um, I'll, I'll have a, a, the code there so you can copy it if you want to just experiment with it along with a parts list but also um, I'll, I'll explain what I did in the code because I use this code to teach myself how a continuous rotation servo motor actually works. So that's all I wanted to do in this, in this video, just to give you the update as far as I'm, I'm actually working on trying out some of my electronic ideas for the B9 robot. So uh, this is just one of them. Another thing I'm experimenting with is the blinking of lights on it and I, blinking lights is, is easy but I really wanted to do something that was totally random. Now I'm using a Arduino Mega. This is the Mega uh, la, 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 20, Mega 2560 I think it is. Uh, that's way too big to put inside the B9 robot model. And if I could fit that in the B9 and make the B9 self-contained, this would be the ideal board because it has, you know, a lot of input and outputs on it. But you'll see here I have two rows of LEDs, and that, it's not running right now, but there's six LEDs in each row. And these blue LEDs, by the way, are going to be very bright. Um, it's, it's a different type of LED, but I just used what I had laying around, um, so forgive that. And then these LEDs on the top here are for the square, the little square lights that are on the robot chest. So let me get this plugged in so that it works. And then the first thing you're going to see is it go through a lamp test. And what I, I, I included the lamp test so that when it comes on, you'll see, it, hopefully, <laughs> there, you'll see each one of the lamps come on individually right across because it's checking each one of the lamps And that's a good indication for me that everything is working fine and that there's nothing going awry. And then once the lamp test is finished, the random blink of these guys will start. These always stayed on. 
but the random blink of those guys is where it's going to start. So that's just going to stay put where it is. So let me like zoom in a little bit on that. And you can see that those lights are blinking at a random rate and each one right now is a random blink. So each one of these, like if you look at this blue one down here, uh, even though it looks similar, but it, every blink is slightly different. So it's all random. So that's what I'm planning for the chest area for the lights. And again, I've got to come up with a way to do it with a much smaller board. Um, the, the micro doesn't have enough IO on it. So I may have to cheat a little bit and have a couple of lights tied in parallel and just mix them up so that it looks random. Um, but anyway, this is this. And again, on my website, I will have the code that I use for this. And I'll explain the code for that particular blinking, that random blinking and the, and the lamp test. So that's something that I've been working on. And then one last thing. So like I said, one last thing is, and you can see what's going on already, is that I'm experimenting with the LED or LEDs that will show in his, in his mouth area that he's talking and it should change with talking. And all I'm doing in this case is I'm using a microphone and it's recording my own voice and showing it as a level. So if I either cluster those LEDs or or some way behind the um, the chest region, region, I'll be able to play the audio of the robot talking and have it display, you know, in a sequence that matches his voice. So this is the other thing that I've been experimenting with. Um, this is all uh, the, the first one with the motor and also this one is something that I've never done before. I, I have an MP3 player for the Arduino on, on order. It should be here tomorrow. And I also um, have, I want to figure out then how I can control different soundtracks from that uh, controller, that MP3 player through the RC control. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. I haven't even looked at the plastic parts of the robot jet because I'm testing out my electronic theories, my the, what I think may or may not work. Uh, again, all of this stuff will work. I'm going to have to get much smaller packages. Uh, even the LEDs that I'm using here, these are five millimeter LEDs. The chest lights have to be three millimeter. I have three millimeters LEDs. I just, I just got some. I mean, this stuff is really cheap, by the way. Um, if you're looking at it, these, these, some of these parts are less than five dollars. Um, and so, you know, it's not like a big investment on it, but you do have to have a little bit of knowledge of electronics and the Arduino and some programming. So I will also have the code that I'm using for this up on my website and an explanation. I'm not sure if I'm going to do video explanations or if I'm going to just do text type um, explanations, but it's, it's it'll be up on my website. You'll be able to at least uh, copy and paste the code along with a parts list of stuff that I used to build these projects. All right, so that's where I'm at right now. I, I will be um, starting to look at the actual physical robot parts to see exactly, you know, space, the space I'm going to have in there. So uh, that's where I stand right now. And I will see you. Oh, give me, give me a, let me tilt this up here a little bit. Give me that thumbs up. <laughs> I'm zoomed way in. <laughs> uh, give me that thumbs up and give it a like. 
give it a subscribe. I want to thank everybody, and you know what? I will be back in the next video. Bye.